You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. So we're going to be talking on the phone all about how Brits are losing a week of family time to uh, domestic dramas every year. Firstly, thank you very much for joining us. I was hoping that both of you could just introduce yourself to our listeners firstly. Yep, I'm Jeff Brazier, TV presenter, father of two boys. And I'm Corinne Sweet, a psychologist. I was hoping you could start by telling us a bit more about this uh, research and what it's revealed. Okay, there's been a survey done by Dolmio, and they've found out that actually a very high percentage of British parents, which is about 88%, think that mealtime should really be quality time, but actually they themselves are running around spending about 27 hours uh, over a year cooking food, and they are trying to get their kids to sit down, but there's a lot of dramas at mealtimes. So there's dramas about whether kids want to eat the veg or whether they refuse to eat altogether, if they want a different meal, if they want pudding before dinner. And what happens in the end is that dinner time can become quite fraught, especially if you've got things like gadgets on and nobody wants to sit at the table and everybody's eating at different times. And the survey found that often the parents find they only just have about 15 minutes with their kids and it's all a bit rushed and it's all a bit bad-tempered. Well, I'm not always surprised at uh, at that, but uh, what are the sort of things people can do to try and prevent this from being an issue? I'll tell you what really works for me. My children are now um, 13 and 14. I'm not quite sure how we've got to to that ripe old age, but I... I always um, <clears throat> I always get them to help me in the kitchen. So when they're helping me prepare the food, it means that they take some form of ownership of it and it means that they're far more likely to eat it uh, as a result. Um, I also know that you know I'll, I'll look ahead and, and think, right, I'm going to be busy this evening because I'm going to come home from work at five um, and then I've got to leave at quarter to six to go to train my football team, for example. Um, so maybe in the in the morning I'll have prepared half of the food, I'll have done the chopping, I'll have I'll have got it all together so something's marinating maybe, um, so that when I come home it's just a case of putting it on the heat. Um, and, and then obviously I've saved myself a lot of time there. So I think a little bit of an, a little bit of organisation goes a long way. Because I suppose that's the other trouble that it's easy with people coming in at different times. You'd all end up eating at different points and perhaps never even eating together that often. Well, I, I quite agree. I think that we all have to make quite an effort. And if you're a parent like Jeff or, or like me, you have to, and you're working, you've got to do a bit of organising, as Jeff has said, to get organised, to get the food prepared in the morning. I do that. I've cooked a dinner for somebody coming round tonight. I cooked it yesterday, you know, and you actually, you can actually get yourself organised, but you have to insist that you're going to eat together because I think family life really hinges on being able to be with your children without being frazzled, without shouting at them and without always just getting a frozen pizza out the fridge. You know, it's important that you actually have time together. And if everybody's a bit frazzled, I, I play a game at the tea table, which is highs, lows and ha-has, where everybody says, you know, a good thing of the day, a bad thing of the day, and something that's funny. And you can just talk about, you don't have to talk about deep, meaningful things or just have an argument. You know, you can just have a bit of fun. So I suppose it's finding what works for you and also trying new things. Otherwise, you end up getting stuck in that same old rut of this always happens at the dinner table. It's interesting that from one household to another, um, some one family might absolutely dread dinner time because of the chaos that ensues. And actually, another household has maybe got things a little more organised. Um, you know, can actually really look forward to it because it's a time when they come together, they share their their, their thoughts and feelings. But but maybe also they 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 play games as well. Maybe maybe after the dinner has, has ended, they sort of. You know, like like we do at home, we we get the cards out, we play banana grams or something else, and it just it actually makes meal time something that we look forward to. And and when you think what our job is from a from a sort of bigger picture point of view, it's to give our kids the tools for uh, to to go into their adult life prepared. Um, and you know, I I I know that we battle against um, the devices these days as parents, and 
I, I want my children to be able to hold a conversation. They're going to need to when it comes to going for job interviews and when it comes to, you know, ho- holding friendships and things like that. So um, if they can't look me in the eye at the table and ask me how my day was, then, then I'd consider them sort of not prepared as, as a result. So do you have any more tips or ideas that people can, can use to get around these, these problems? Well, I think both Jeff and I think that getting your children involved in preparing the food is very important. So my daughter would, you know, she always helps me chop things, even though through the years, she's 20 now, but all through the years where she was going through exams, she still had a bit of downtime where she, I'd say, can you give me a hand with this? And we'd chop you know, the peppers to go in a sauce or we would make cookies together or we'd make, I'd get her to say, would you like to make the pudding, you know, and I'll make the main course or whatever. And getting her to set the table, you know, if she used to always like doing that because she could be quite creative with it. She could put flowers on the table or she could draw something or she could set it out how she wanted to do it. And if you give children some sort of ownership of what they're doing with you, it shows them that, you know, you can have a really nice time at the meal time. I think that as parents, you know, we tend to think of it as just posting food into your child, you know, get it done. But actually, if you live in Europe and you live in sort of Germany or France or Italy, people sit around the table and talk and you hang out a bit. And I think if we can actually allow that, that's a really good time. As Jeff was saying, you learn those skills of talking and exchanging um, talking about the news, whatever, which is something you can take with you into the rest of your life. I think we use how busy we are as an excuse to, to get rid of the boundaries. Um, and I, it's taken me quite a few years, really, and a lot of trial and error to realise how important those boundaries are, especially around, around dinner time. So just having um, consistent rules um, with regards to how much they helped me before dinner and, and how much they certainly help me when it comes to the back end of things uh, clearing the table, washing up, wiping up, putting away. Nobody slinks off to their bedroom and, and sort of downs tools, as it were, until we're all done. And, and it just promotes the togetherness, to be honest. And um, and I know that, that my children are a lot happier as a result of it. But it did require me to kind of go through a few difficult, maybe weeks, maybe even months, of, of insisting and feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm a nag and I'm, I'm the bad person for kind of trying to instill this within my children but it's changed things for the, for the better without a doubt so by being persistent and uh, sticking with it it works out in the end by making it um, fun enjoyable you're perhaps even learning some important life skills in direct well, they, yeah they, I was going to say they, they are because they're, they're ultimately learning how to how to maintain a house how to feed themselves um, and these are obviously very important skills, equally as important as anything they'll learn at school, um, to take into them when they when they leave home. I, I want them to be able to to survive on their own two feet. And I think that's fantastic um, information. I also think that as adults, we have to model to our children what we, what we want them to do. So it's do as I do, not do as I say. So if you're the one turning your phone off and turning your tablet off and not having the telly on when you eat because you want to just sit there, even if it's uncomfortable and there's a silence, that's okay. It's fine to do that. Um, That's better than just everybody looking at their screens. You don't taste the food if you look at your screen. You don't look at each other. You don't relate. So just, you know, make that little bit of time every day and it will improve your relationships longer term. Well, if you're happy we've covered everything, I'd like to thank the both of you very much for taking the time out to talk to us here at BRFM Bridge Radio on the Daniel Monday Night Community Show. Not at all. Thank you very much. And if anybody would like any more information on on the survey and all of the findings and any more tips and advice, they can go to the dolmio.co.uk website.